Hi, I'm Dave from Sailing Laguna. We've taken a year off work to sail the Caribbean. In last episode, we made the passage from the north coast of the Dominican Republic to Samana, where we enjoyed the lovely Puerto Bahia and visited some waterfalls. We then headed down the southeast coast to Punta Cana, where we staged, waiting for a crossing to Puerto Rico. For those Australians watching, Puerto Rico is one of the larger islands in the northern Caribbean. Now, let's get straight to it. The number two adventure activity of the Caribbean is located in Las Playas in the northeastern end of Puerto Rico. Look for the green fence where you'll pay $5 to park in some bloke's backyard and walk down to the slides. Obviously, it's uneven, rocky terrain, but there are two slides here to look for. We'll get to the upper one shortly, but if you walk down the river a little, you'll find the perfect slide to familiarise yourself with sliding down a natural, natural rock hard surface and into a pool of water. The kids and I of course had several goes and you could see the smiles on the kids faces getting bigger and bigger with every ride we took. We of course began to become adventurous doing some group slides and it was really enjoyable sliding, jumping and generally playing in the cool mountain water. Further upstream is a larger, steeper slide. This one is a little more intimidating, so I started Campbell off at halfway. After that we moved further up the slide and started enjoying the full experience. I was impressed with Cooper who went straight to the top by himself, and soon afterwards there was a small crowd that had formed and it was lovely to see how people waited in line for the slide to be cleared before, they, before taking their turn. No, I'm serious. You could kind of tell there were all sorts of skill levels and one of the girls did cop a blow to the face, face which of course caused a few people to reassess their desire to slide. And others that weren't phased and continued to flirt with a trip to the dentist by going face first. The best slide of the day was definitely though that of a train of college students who uh, really made everyone have a good giggle. Anyway, as I said, this adventure activity is second only to 27 waterfalls in the Dominican Republic and it's a definite must do if you're in Puerto Rico. You should also factor in a drive through the El Yuque National Park on your way to Los Playas or from. You'll need to get a ticket in advance if you want to go in but even just outside the park there are a number of walking trails and some cool areas to have a swim or picnic lunch by. So my advice is to pack a lunch, slow down, and spend a day to tour around this area. Your day tour of El Urique will probably coincide with a night or two in Old San Juan. From a historical point of view, San Juan was the first well-protected port which was supported by good agricultural lands so that captains could restock their vessel after arriving, or if they're about to return, across the Atlantic to Europe. It served as a collection point for many of the riches that were being pulled out of Central America and the Caribbean since the 1500s. And as such, the fortifications of old San Juan were quite significant with entry to the city only permitted through openings such as the Old Do you boys San Juan have permission Gate. to enter the city of Old San Juan? Yes. Inside, we walked along the cobblestone streets that were constructed using the ballast from the ships. We were warmed by the various pastel colours of the houses and the history of the city, which played, which played such a huge role in the development of the new world. Well, at least I appreciated all this. I don't know what boys actually got from it. Rodeo is the fastest car. No, it isn't. There are two actual forts in San Juan. El Moro is probably the most prominent, being positioned right on the point to guard the entrance to the harbour. With the Spanish or Portuguese beginning construction in the mid 1500s, it's undergone a number of attacks from pirates and other countries. Some more successful than others. Sir Francis Drake had a go, the French pirates, the Dutch. But ultimately, it was the Americans who ended up with Puerto Rico at the end of the Spanish-American War. El Moro is famous for its sentry boxes. Could you imagine being stationed in this little box for 12 hours a day without your phone, no book, no newspaper? No wonder some soldiers jumped to their death. As you can see, we hired the audio tour for our visit. 
I used one of these in Pearl Harbor a number of years ago and it was really good. However, the El Moro audio tour must have been put together by a 12 year old. It was rubbish. Do you know how annoying it is to have site 113 next to 106? As well as interesting features that simply weren't mentioned? I dropped Campbell back off at the hotel and picked up Cooper for the tour of San Cristobal. This fort is positioned at the other end of Old San Juan. You may recall the entrance here from the Pirates of the Caribbean. What was also interesting was thinking about how the 400 year old vertical lookouts here in the sentry box were redesigned with engineering to become horizontal slits when San Cristobal was repurposed for World War II. Now, at this stage, you're probably asking yourself if this is a sailing channel. Okay, so let's get back to that. We had to wait to be checked out of the, the Dominican Republic, so we couldn't leave until around 8 a.m., which was coincidentally around the time that the fishing competition started. None of this six knots stuff. We need to be going at 26 knots. Well, here we are out in the uh, Mona Passage. Uh, pretty benign little day, really. So fortunately, in today's world, we have things like Predict Wind, um, where we knew we were going to start the passage with a little bit of wind uh, on the nose. But now, as predicted, uh, the winds have died off. Uh, there's still obviously a fair bit of lumpiness around, as you can see, which ain't, isn't great for those people that suffer from seasickness, but it's a relatively easy motor across the Mona Passage. Nonetheless, the Mona Passage is still a, a uh, waterway that you need to be careful of. Because it goes from like 4,000 metres deep up to 500 metres deep in the channel and then all the way up to like I think maybe 70 metres deep, um, there are some spots that can have some rather turbulent sea conditions. So many boats have run into trouble here. Another reason why it can be a bit of a treacherous waterway is that you have waters or currents that are running in and out of the Caribbean Sea. So yeah, you've got to look out for the wind, uh, the elevations in the sea floor, and then also the ocean currents that are running backwards and forwards. There were a few squalls around in the afternoon, but they seemed to be mainly isolated rain with a little wind, and as predicted, we pulled into Puerto Rico at around 9 p.m. that night. Well, Puerto Real, actually. Yay, we're in Puerto Rico, all right. Um, so we've checked in now. Um, now we didn't have cell phone coverage. We don't have self, uh, SIM cards here for the US. So we actually had to come in. I entered the data onto a screen that's upstairs here at the office, but um, because I, didn't have, I still didn't have a cell phone, um, that didn't work. So uh, Diana, I think it is, in the office was super nice. She actually spent about half an hour on the phone today uh, transferring the details uh, to the Customs Border Protection Officers and they're coming out at 4pm uh, this afternoon to meet me in person or whatever. A um, bit weird because Mike and Dee, they're from Canada so they're also not US citizens but they've gone already. They're, um, they checked in with the Rome app and they're able to go. Anyway, I'm, yeah, we're, we will see the officers this afternoon and um, yeah, then away we go. It seems that every time we check into a new country, there was then a challenge to find a SIM card that had a suitable data plan for us. I'm sure Google Fi is about to solve this issue, but it's not quite there at the moment for high data users who are out of the US for months at a time. Now, I would suggest staying in Porto Real and doing all your island adventures while the boat is in this cheap, well-protected bay. Marina Pescaderia are really welcoming, even if you're at anchor, and in fact, the people of Puerto Rico were one of the most hospitable people that we've come across. Anyway, get a hire car, have a few nights in San Juan, see the forts, do the Los Playas natural water slides and the national park out that way. Then once you're done, look for some favorable weather and complete the dash along the south coast of Puerto Rico all the way out to Culebra in as little steps and as fast as possible. So we are currently in Puerto Rico. And I just ate two ice creams. Yes driving in our one dollar per hour high <laughs> car from the marina from the marina thank you marina pescaderia 
We had some low winds predicted this afternoon, which is a little bit rare. Usually it blows in in the afternoons uh, in this part of the world. But the low winds have given us an opportunity to come around the point and we're going to try and head around to the bioluminescence or phosphorescence uh, bay. It was already dark when we arrived and unfortunately the bioluminescence doesn't actually show up on my phone. It wasn't until morning light that we fully appreciated the stunning beauty of this protected bay. But the south coast of Puerto Rico is best traversed in the early morning hours before the southeasterly trade winds start their battery of the coast. So once again, we, we headed back out to sea. Just spent the day here at a place called Chaos de Cana Gorda, I believe it is. Sorry if I butchered that in Spanish. Um, it's a little, it's part of a national park, so it's a bit of a well-known little spot. Um, there's, it's basically all the on-land stuff is a bit, um, it's a bit damaged at the moment. Looks like it's probably been hit by a hurricane at some stage, but it actually has a couple of channels through the middle of it, and you can go and scuba dive, or sorry, you can go and snorkel these channels and it makes for quite an interesting little experience. Um, again, it's best to do it at slack tide, but if you don't do it at slack tide, um, there and it's actually, the tide was coming in today, what we actually did was there is a little sneaky trail up on the, I guess, more eastern island, and you could walk up the trail, jump in on the ocean side of the island, and then the current brings you back through the middle of the island, as I said. So, it provided for yeah something interesting, some interesting things for the boys and I to have a go at this afternoon. Our next stop was at the yacht club at Ponce. Now this is more of a member type club. They have some nice facilities, but technically, as a guest in the marina, you're not actually allowed to use them. However, being midweek, no one seemed to mind that I when I was the only one in the pool. Ponce is a nice little stop to quickly go into town and have a look around at the old buildings, which I didn't quite get the point of as to why it was painted like that. Uh, there was a, the water fountain in the town centre, although our main goal for our trip to Ponce was actually to get our COVID vaccine. Now, here's something amazing. We didn't need an appointment. There was basically no lining up. It was fast, professional, clean, but... Even so more amazing was that as short-term tourists, we received our shots months before the, our countrymen in Australia started to get theirs. So, go Team Puerto Rico. Well, bye-bye, Ponce. Thank you very much. We pulled into Ponce just for one day. Um, as usual, sailing the south coast of Puerto Rico. It's 4 a.m. We're out nice and early. Uh, there's an offshore breeze blowing. A few hours here and we should be down at Salinas. It's a nice enough place with a bunch of places to have a drink by the water, but the most interesting feature we discovered was a bakery, convenience store, which also was a casino. You might just be able to make out the poker machines in the background. That was a bit weird. All right, well, here we are with uh, engine maintenance, I guess you'd say. So the old Honda 20 horsepower, while we were in Ponce, I had a guy come and do the impeller because I've never done one of those before. Um, he also topped up the gearbox oil, but I've now found that we have one of these to do the gearbox oil with, so we'll be able to do that ourselves next time. We've also, of course, done the engine oil there and a new engine oil filter. We've done a fuel filter, um, but we had the wrong size spark plug, so we haven't done that. And we also haven't done the thermostat. Um, which we should order and replace that as well. But there's a birthday for the Honda. Yay! The next morning we continued our trip along the south coast. We found a nice enough little town, but weirdly enough it didn't seem to have a convenience store, so we kept on moving the next morning. Place them at some point, but 
Um, yeah. Seeing how I go with a starting off with a double constrictor knot, and then I have done um, a whipping knot. This brings us back to the point about Puerto Real being a good spot to base yourself for your adventures in Puerto Rico. There aren't any good anchorages in the southeast end of Puerto Rico, and the marinas on the whole eastern end of the island are some of the most expensive marinas we've encountered, sort of like 160 US per night. And that's if you can get them to get back to you about whether they have any availability, which, as, I, as you could probably tell, was difficult to do. It's lucky that Puerto Ricans are some of the nicest people we have met, as several reached out to us online, and we ended up with a free berth while we were there on the east coast. This is also a good time to bring up the seaweed sargassium. It's becoming a real problem. It's actually so common in the water that we stopped trawling for fish because the lures were getting clogged too frequently. Every eastern coastline that we came across had a stench of decaying seaweed. The marina had to block off one of its channels and it's now forming decaying stinky quagmires in the end of the canals. The residential community here has even employed a boat to try and remove some of it. It's really becoming a problem, and it stinks like hell. Hey Cooper, is this your ideal place to live with all these golf carts? Maybe. Here in Palmas del Mar, everyone just drives their golf cart around the streets. How awesome is that, boys? Now, I couldn't wind the episode up without mentioning boat issues. We sprung a leak in a hose, which was easily fixed by shortening it, and I eventually replaced the whole line in St. Martin. The washing machine also stopped pumping out, but this model was actually built with maintenance in mind and was relatively easy, easy to fix. Something had jammed in the impeller. Anyway, that pretty much brings us to an end of Puerto Rico. Look out for an upcoming video on one of our top two favorite anchorages, Cooler Brica. I'll catch you then.